Hi everyone, now I'm going to be tying this fly here. Now this is called the gravel bed. Uh, and this part is from the, the Fly Fisher's Entomology by Alfred Ronalds. Now I'll put a photograph up of the actual with the fly next to the, the drawing in his book. Now the book's for the 1800s, so it's an old pattern. Now the reason for tying this is I recently spoke to a friend who fishes uh, the River Clyde and we're actually talking about flies on the Clyde and a really well known fly is the gravel bed and uh, we were talking about it and I got on to like, I've actually tied a winged version because the, the one they tie in the Clyde is basically a, a spider pattern or a hackled pattern which is a black hackle and a partridge, a grey partridge. Uh, the body is the same, it's a grey it's a grey body and uh, so I'm going to be tying this fly just uh, just to show, or to show everyone, obviously, but to, to show my friend uh, this fly, uh, what it's like. So, it was just a bit of fun. Now, I'm going to be tying it with a, a Piers of Silk, traditional silk. This is a, a kind of lead coloured or grey coloured uh, silk. And uh, you could use a normal grey uni thread, 8-0 or something like that. Uh, whatever you like. But I'm going to stick to the traditional silks. They are waxed it, you've got to wax these silks. Now I'm actually going to start about a head length away from the eye. This just saves a wee bit of bulk nearer to the point where I'm tying off. Now the, the thread is the body. Now we just wind down, forming the body with the thread, and then it's come back up. Now the length of the body can be to the point or just to where you think the bar would be. Now the hook I'm using, I haven't mentioned it, it's a light wire hook, it's actually a dry fly. This is it here, it's a full and bell hook. Now, this fly, it's a cock hackle in front, I mean it is a wet fly, but it can be fished as a dry, you could use it. So I'm using just a light wire because these flies, the gravel bed, are basically a fly you see over the gravel beds, round about in the side, the, beside the river. And when, they do, when they're on the river, the fish daily go for them. Uh, so as I say, it's a, good, it's a good old pattern, and as I say, I thought you would like to see it. Hook choice is up to yourself. It could be a standard uh, medium wire hook, a wet fly hook, or your dry fly hook, or whatever. So, now in the book itself, it, the hackle is tied on before the wing. Now I'm going to do it the other way. That's just a preference. It's just something I like. The that's the idea of tying your own flies. You can add your wee touches. Now, in the book, in the book, it's uh, the dressing asked for the inside feather of the wing or. A, feather from a woodcock's wing. Now the inside fibre is this, this is the inside, outside is this colour here, sorry, is this colour. The inside is this lighter colour and that's what I'm going to be using for the wing. So these are secondary feathers. Now I've got a right and a left. Now you could fold or roll a wing but I'm just going to use a right and a left. So I'm bringing a slip out from one side. I'm happy with the thickness I want. I can tear it away. Just set that on your desk and then do the same for the other side. Fine with that. Just check it and tear it away. Now what we want to do is just lay one on top of the other. Now you want they're curving away from one another. That's you want the, the best colour on the outside. You'll see how they slightly curve. But these all slightly pull together when it's been tied on. But don't mind that because it actually adds movement to the fly so but when you think about it, once you start to cast this, these fibres will start to slightly flare and then come basically between, mix between the hackle fibres and the wing. And that's what makes it fish. So what we're going to do here is tie this on. So we just wing to the back of the hook. We just hold basically right on top of the shank. Pinch it basically with your finger and thumb. And then we're going to pinch and loop the thread. So we bring the thread up pinch the thread and then form that loop within the fingers and then bring it through nice and easy. Do the same again, pinch, nice and easy. And this is where we can check just to see what the wing's like. Now if you're happy, she's fine, which uh, basically I'm happy with that. Uh, there's always a good side and a bad side. Now I'm going to go back just to show you that sometimes it sits better. Right, and it's sitting up. I mean, I don't mind it sitting up because I want it to mix within the hackle. But if you want to lower it slightly, if you go back 
and then just change fingers here, just check the length you want, just allow that low shape over the back here, and then hold it. So basically we're bringing the fibre slightly down, and then because we've already pinched the loop, it's easier to tie in, and easier to get a lower wing if you want it. You see it's lower the wing, so we're happy, so then we can trim that away. It's up to yourself if you want to do that. Uh, but that's one of the ways I actually lower the wing in the fly. So there we are. Now, I'm saving a bit of bulk here by... I'm not going to carry on down and tie in the, the waist of the, the wing there. I'm going to actually do tie in the hackle as well as do that. So I've got a dye black cock hackle here. So basically what I'm going to do is to remove the fluff. I'm going to trim stem so I've got enough to tie in. I'm going to wax my thread and to catch it on the side of the hook. Now and then as I say what I'm going to do is wind down, tying in the waist end of the wing as well as tying on the hackle. It's something you've got to do with the piezo silk because it's a thick thread and it just it's just you're managing the bulk and not end up with too much. Now I'm going to fold the hackle, so I'm just going to bring it through my fingers and then I'm going to wind it, what did I say, one, quite a long fibre now two turns, it's, it mentions two turns, so there's one and basically that's into the second turn, I don't want any more than that so we'll cut that in basically a couple of turns and I'm going to fold it back, now the thread now is at the eye so I'm going to come back up, just take my time, tying in, the basically fold back the hackle, and then I'm going to wet finish. You got a wax there, I'm just going to clean it. And then just one, two, three, tighten up. Just take your time, Just I use my nail on the side of the, the eye of the hook and then pull the thread so it embeds the thread in and gets it nice and neat and uh, there's a wee bit of wax there when you obviously wax the thread and you pull the knot tight and there's a wee build up just where it stops trim away the thread, trim away the hackle I'm just rubbing the wax away here. Just watch your, your hackle. Yeah. And then there's a wee drop there, I've just got to... I mean it's not it's it's okay to have a wee touch of wax. And then it's just a matter of then a wee bit of varnish. Just to take the vase if you can. I'm applying it obviously with a wee brush. Very light. I've tapered this brush so that I've only got one or two fibres. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. As I say, if you get hold of the book, I mean, there's lots of editions of this book. Because way way back. I mean, if you want a first edition, you'll pay a lot for the first edition. But if you want a copy, I mean, there's plenty of there's copies out there of that book, and uh, and you'll pay. It's, it's quite it's quite cheap. But there is no play. As you see, the photograph is a hand coloured. Uh, so it, it, it is, it's nice. So anyway, uh, there we are. So that's the gravel bed, as I say, a winged version. Uh, and uh, one I would certainly, it's worth having in your box. It will represent a few type of flies, but the, the gravel bed, as I say, is a, a recognised pattern. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. And again, thank you for watching.